Here in the UK, we are heading towards a long, a very long and very welcome weekend of Platinum Jubilee celebrations. But while the nation celebrates the incredible reign of Her Maj the Queen, will the construction industry also be celebrating? Or will we have to cut back on bunting and cakes as the sector's fortunes take a downturn? I don't know the answer to that question, but I know a man who does. And he's coming up just as soon as I've played his entrance music. Mr. Edwards, good morning. Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm I'm feeling remarkably chipper, given the fact that I'm half asleep. Yeah, not too bad at all. Um, I, I'm going to come to the uh, the more pressing question in just a second, but obviously we we have our our, our people in the chat are already asking about the uh, state of play in Wales, and and uh, Gary Muirhead up in Scotland has already asked. Have Scotland retained their number one position? I, I haven't seen the figures, but I'm going to no. take a wild stab and say, no, no, they probably haven't. I just find. Uh... You caught me on the hop there, so I'll just tell you now straight away. Yes, Scotland are one nil up. They're a top dog again. Yes, they've beaten Wales. <laughs> but but UK wide? No, no. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, you have me worried there. I don't want to be sending all our money up 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 to Bonnie Scotland. Good grief! <laughs> no, they've pipped Wales. Uh, I hope it's not going to be sort of like a prelude to the obviously the World Cup, uh, uh, which they've got the qualifiers to go through. They've got to beat Ukraine first of all, obviously uh, Scotland. But uh, yeah, um, yes, they have uh, pipped Wales this month again. Beating Ukraine with the entire world watching. And the <laughs> good, yeah. good luck with that. Yeah, there's a few scruples involved in that one, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Now, obviously, you were in the green room while I was introducing you, so you will know um, my first question. Can we go into this national holiday feeling positive, or should we spend the time building a recession-proof bomb shelter? What do you think? I don't think we should be shopping at uh, Harrods at the present moment in time. Probably we need to be shopping uh, in the lesser known or no, the more well-known uh, shops, which have got cheaper products um, or alternatives at this present moment in time. But I wouldn't say not to stop buying at all. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I, I think it's it's indicative of, of the state of the uh, the construction nation at the moment that I've actually taken to watching the BC Live League table pretty much daily. And uh, there was a period early in the month where it was looking yeah. a bit bleak. Uh, the last few days, seems like it's regained its mojo. So what, yeah. let, let's, let's cut to the chase. What are the scores on the doors? Well, we're not quite at the end of the month. Obviously, here we are on the 31st of May. But uh, at the present moment in time, we're 4.7 billion. Uh, which is an okay month where we where we used to say sort of like the four billion was the uh, the benchmark uh, across the UK uh, was the lowest should we say that we would not want it and, and probably with inflation and everything else we should be looking at four and a half to five billion so we're right at the bottom end and as you said um, it was only in the last few days that we really picked up a little bit and uh, uh, one of those was the uh, Skanska award that they they picked up in the last few days so I don't know whether people are holding back good news um, in their own businesses and to try and make sure that it's a continuous flow rather than putting it all out at once. But yeah, it, it did take a while to get over that four billion pound mark. But uh, that's that that month, obviously last month was something like 5.5 billion it finished at. Um, so we're 14, 15 percent down uh, in number or in value this month. Um, but there is an increase in the number of projects. Uh, last month, we ended at 233 new projects. Uh, this month, we're, we're at 272 as we speak now. So we've got a few more hours left. Uh, so there's an increase in uh, number of projects. But obviously, that means that they're of a smaller nature, a smaller value. And the same goes... Oh, sorry, that was companies. 233 companies, 272 I got that wrong. 233 companies, 272 companies this month. So there's an increase in number of businesses, but also there's 353 projects last month and there's 423 as we speak today. So, um, yeah, there's more companies winning work, but of a smaller value. 
um, and there's obviously more projects out there of a smaller value. So it's a, it's a it's a rather thick, strange way to call it. So that's it's so don't stop buying. Uh, just uh, look at the cheaper products at the moment. It's quite hard to read that because mm. you and I have been doing this for an awful long time. You longer than I have, but um, we've been doing this for a long time. And I think the indications of a downturn or a recession is the work just dries up. It's not a case of small jobs dry up or big jobs dry up. Work dries up. Mm. We're not seeing that, um, despite no. you know cost of, of living, cost of fuel, mm. inflation, and all the pressures that we have with us, and yet we're, we're still seeing plenty, well, almost enough work coming through. Yeah, but there is another key key indicator here as well. Only eight companies have uh, secured work over that 100 million mark that, that we normally, and so that's definitely down. Um, and uh, the likes of Kia, who we normally look as a, a weather vane for the one a day projects they're at 14 now the the runaway winner this month is morgan sindel uh, and they have uh, picked up over 50 projects but why that is is because there was a little bit of a lapse in uh, submitting some of their information so therefore there is a from last month and this month there's a catch-up so if you add the two together um then probably you you've got a norm but yeah Kia's are way down in 16th position on the table so far with 14 projects, whereas Morgan's into a second with 53 projects. So take me through the top five. Right. Top five. Uh, leading <coughs> the way. Oh, <laughs> leading the way is Lang O'Rourke this month. Um, they've picked up a, a, a single project of 400 million and that's at Pinewood Studios. It's the facilities in question will compromise of nine sound stages workshops and accommodation um it's what well, is shepparton studio sorry pinewood studio south P shepparton um it's to do with a netflix i believe uh netflix have invested quite a considerable amount of money in that area and uh, so they've picked up the work um yeah so that's actually obviously a surrey project and i oh sorry uh twickenham sorry so when we come to the regional regional areas you'll also see that there's a quirkiness this month to to the actual values there uh second on the list as i said is morgan sindel uh they have picked up 53 projects um the largest of which is uh up in ipswich bury st edmunds that neck of the woods um or suffolk should i say rather than ipswich and it's a community hub and council offices uh, and that's worth £80 million. Pounds. So they've got a number of projects, going back to the size-wise, what we said, a number of projects, but of a lesser value. Uh, yeah, the client there is West Suffolk Council. And third on the list is Balfour Beatty. Um, and this will please everybody who uses the M25, um, or not as the case may be. Uh, M25 junctions 10 to 16, Walsham Cross, um, major refurbishments, alterations to that neck of the woods. Um, it's also widening the area as well. So um, unfortunately, uh, the M25 is going to see some uh, considerable delays. So their largest one of their projects, Balfour Beach, they picked up two this month. Uh, the largest one is a £300 million project for obviously the motorway um, and the client is obviously National Highways. Uh, now is a good time to ask uh, the question that Gary Muirhead has put in. Uh, is house building still keeping the figures looking good on construction? First couple are not house building. so um... No, it's, it's, it's a month again that shows that house building, um, yes, it's, it's up there at 1.2 billion, and I'll come, uh, come to that, but it's not absolutely way, way, way ahead because obviously you've got that large job in Twickenham, which we class as entertainment because it's studios, um, and you've also got um, Rhodes, the Balfour Beatty project there as well. So, yeah, they, they are leading the way and it will always lead the way uh, because we're still on this building program to try and produce something like a quarter of a million houses for the next five years. Um, but it isn't streaking ahead this month. Um, number four on the list is Skanska. Uh, on the BC Live list and the BC Live table, they've picked up a single project uh, which is worth 259 million. Now that came out just in uh, in the last few days. It's a British Army vehicle storage and maintenance facility, 
uh, the construction along with mechanical and electrical engineering services of a new storage building workspace. Uh, and that is in Tewkesbury. Uh, so that's a £259 million pound project. And finally on the list is uh, Bomer and Kirkland. Uh, and they've picked up uh, eight projects this month. Uh, the largest so far is a £127 million pound, uh, distribution centre. So it's a hub centre. Uh, I believe one of the main uh, tenants is going to be Home Bargains uh, Distribution Centre. And it's a new automated distribution centre of about 8,000, sorry, 830,000 square feet. So Bomer and Kirkland have picked, that, picked up that one. And that, that's, as I say, uh, that project is actually in Warrington. So that's uh, so the spread is across the country this month. Awesome stuff. Um, Gary Muirhead has raised another question. M25 grub, uh, upgrade. I'm not sure if you know this. Is it <laughs> part of the smart motorway scheme or have smart motorways been scrapped? Well, I'm, I so I believe and uh, there is a moratorium on smart motorways as we speak to look into it. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's a smart motorway section. Uh, the improvements package include a new uh, an elongated roundabout to increase capacity, four noon dedicated free-flown slip roads to reduce queuing from the M25 and the A3 widening and the M25 from three lanes to four lanes uh, at the junction of the A3. So it doesn't look like it's a smart way to motorway. Um, it just looks like it's improvements around getting on and off of the actual motorway and obviously uh, increasing one of the lanes as well. It's possibly the worst news I've ever heard because uh, where I go <laughs> fishing is about half a mile beyond the A3 M25 junction. That's my my summer ruined, but there we are. Um, I think the A25 is going to be your option on that one. Then, like it, 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 well, I, else. Either that or I need to just find another hobby, possibly. Um, Probably. <laughs> we've, we've already touched on, on sectors. We know that house building has uh, become top dog yet again. Yes. No great surprise yes. there. How's the rest of the, uh, the sectors doing? Well, entertainment because of those Shepherd and Studio, or that uh, is four hundred million. So, so that's doing very well this month. That's third. Second is miscellaneous. That's the one where we 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 put together the likes of housing as well as office and retail areas as well. We don't obviously we don't know the split. And fourth on the list is uh, offices, and there's quite a lot of fit out in that in that section. So, hence uh, Morgan uh, Morgan Sindel Group has obviously secured a lot of those works as well. But yeah, other than that, um, roads over 400 million because of the uh, obviously the M25 uh, project. Um, and where else? Education slipping a bit, really, this month. Um, it's only down. It's below 300 million. So we always like to see education. And, and there's even worse than that is health and welfare. And I think you spoke yesterday or the day before on your show about uh, where are these uh 40 or so uh, hospitals that were support, supposedly put in the manifesto to go forward. Number one, I'd like to see the list of those 40 uh, rather than just saying 40. Um, number two, I think they've already de redefined the fact of new hospitals, meaning major refurbishments of existing hospitals. Um, so obviously our system is very quick to actually critically analyze all of that and and it's not a bad place to start to say right okay what health projects have been actually um produced or come to uh come to the marketplace since obviously that uh, the new government got in place and sometimes we do need to keep um our governments in hand shall we say and actually say where are all these projects <laughs> yeah good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> i was but being very diplomatic I, I, there i was being extremely yeah. diplomatic there and but uh, again I, I do think you know given that that was a major promise and, and you know mm. we were all very excited about it mm. um and, and and given the fact that you know health was such a focus over the two years of the pandemic and everything else and it does seem to have been pushed not just to the back burner but possibly off the back of the cooker entirely yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised because we've only got, what is it, something like two and a half years, two years left of this government to see some action. Um, now, I did say months ago, uh, probably a year ago or so, probably some of those hospitals, will, if they were new hospitals, would have to be looking at a redesign to take into account 
uh, how we deal with pandemics in the future, because obviously the existing hospitals are very much on an old thought process and probably we now need to um, somehow have proper uh, demarcation zones, shall we say, or, 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 or quarantine zones for if we if there is another pandemic in the future. Um, but it really should be getting off the ground very soon or if not already out to bid. And I, we haven't seen many of those projects out to bid because those projects have to also be, because they're over that threshold, will have to come out via uh, government websites, etc. And even trawling through all of those, uh, we haven't seen pre-qualification levels or, or pre-qualifications out for those those tenders at the present moment in time. Uh, it, it, I always have to preface this with saying I don't believe the government are cynical. That's not strictly true. I believe precisely <laughs> that. But the run-up to uh, an election, particularly what is likely to be a hard-fought general election, Ooh, yes. you can expect to see some action in the vote-winning areas, health, education, roads, rail, and that kind of thing. Uh, speaking of rail, uh, we've had a question in uh, from Gary Muhead. How is the rail industry? Is Network Rail releasing any big projects? And we've also had Ken Hatcher asking if there are any big jobs in Wales. So, <laughs> Let's have a look at the, uh, the let's have a look at the regions. How are the regions faring? Well, um, the regions wise, London did not hit the billion pound mark, uh, which is is news. That is real news. Um, now it reached seven hundred ninety six million pounds. Now second is the Midlands um, as a combined total of something like 800 million. So it's just below London, uh, really is just below London. And if you look further from that, Surrey is uh, got five, over half a billion, 500 million. Now that's because of the Shepparton Studios, which is the 400 million pound project. Uh, and the other one of note, obviously, is Hertfordshire, because that M25 uh, widening came under that, banner rather than surrey um it's 410 million but yes um and obviously with the uh the bomer and kirkland project up up in the north uh, the northwest has done very well as well it's half a billion but yeah the, there is a there is a real news story there that london didn't achieve what it normally has been achieving for the last i don't know how many times you and i can actually state that i i can't think of in the last two years, that London hasn't reached the one billion pound mark. There's there's real mixed messages here, aren't there? Mm. That that London not hitting the the billion pound mark on the one hand, but the the spend on offices, on yes. the other hand, yes, because businesses are the ones that generally are the most fleet of foot, aren't they? You know, if they if they get a sniff of things going slightly squiffy, then investment in offices and new tower blocks and all this kind of thing comes to a juddering halt. And yet that's not the case. So it really is a bit of a mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah. And, and are we seeing a real levelling up? I don't know, because we've been asking for it for I don't know how long a, a levelling up programme across the whole of the UK are we starting to see the green shoots of levelling up the UK with, with projects across the UK? But unfortunately, the UK um, hasn't quite embraced Wales and Scotland just yet. Yeah, I, and again, I, I realise it's one of those um, government catchphrases, levelling up. Levelling up should be bringing up it shouldn't be a case of London taking a dive to, to, to meet the rest of the, the country halfway, should it? No. It, yeah, the billion pounds should always be there in, in London because that's where the, uh, the, the financial sectors are uh, and obviously it's the capital. But, yeah, you're, you're dead right. It shouldn't be uh, reducing one to, to give it to, a, to another. It should be increasing the rest of the UK to come up to London. So, therefore, you have got real investment rather than uh, we all know if you stand still, in today's world, you actually go backwards. So get, let's get, let's get back to the sector. I keep going off at tangents. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I mean, sector wise, I, I, I mean, I guess it's good news. -ish. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Railways um, is is there isn't much spend this month on the railways. Thirty seven million pounds at the moment. So that's pretty uh, lean and mean, shall we say, this month. Uh, but we have had that that area. 
I think they're more focused at the present moment in time, probably in sorting out uh, staffing issues and getting people back on the railways rather than actually uh, increasing the, the network or the reliability. Because we know as well as anybody, if you read uh, the press, that there's going to be uh, issues regarding whether it be uh, uh, network rail or London Underground or et cetera, et cetera, that staffing levels have taken a hit during COVID and uh, we are struggling to get people back uh, to work. But it's not just that industry, is it? It's, it's many industries. And you've already uh, spoken about that yesterday on your show about going to Sweden, how, how the air, air, air travel has been poorly uh, getting back into its uh, rightful I don't know, way of life, shall we say. It's been absolutely rubbish, hasn't it? Yeah, there, there has been a, a real slow return, I think. Uh, you know, once once our restrictions were lifted, it, it seemed like the world had said, OK, we'll, we'll park our masks, we won't worry about COVID and we'll just go off on our holidays or on our business trips. And yet the airlines and the airports don't seem to have, have uh, 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 developed at the same pace. You know, they've laid off half their workforce and they're, they're still not back, as far as I could tell. Um <laughs> Gary has suggested that um, <laughs> some of the some of the money that we need for infrastructure has been spent on a party at number ten. I couldn't possibly comment. I Nor think me. He may have been ambushed by a particularly large cake at some point <laughs> in, the, in the very recent past, and a, um, and a bottle of champagne somewhere along the line. Yeah, <laughs> um, we are going into this uh, long weekend of festivities, um, and we are also on the cusp of the summer period, which is traditionally a bit of a sketchy time for uh, all things construction. There tends to be a bit of a flurry of activity. August dies a death, and then hopefully in the run-up to, to the, the wind-down for Christmas, we are we are back on track again. What are your feelings on how we are looking at the moment? It's like this whole uh, show today. It's a mixed message. It really is. Um, I, I'd like to uh, look in the tea leaves of my tea outside to say to myself, what's going to happen? Um, but I'm no... Uh, no mystic Meg. <laughs> I really am not. I, I'd like to say that this is where we're going to be for the next three or four months because it, there is a little bit more of certainty. I do think we are going to be seeing uh, probably an influx of renewable energy projects coming through. Uh, and what I mean by that, whether it be wind farm or uh, in Scotland around that neck of the woods or whether it be uh, mega factories for batteries, etc., because we're going to have to look at alternatives. Because I don't think this war in Ukraine is uh, there's much of an end to it, unfortunately. Um, and I think the uh, fuel element is only going to become a little bit more severe as we go into the winter months. So I do think we're going to, but the problem there being is obviously they, if we're starting today to do those works, it's not going to be even you know, until way into next year before we actually see the benefits of any of this. Um, I, 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 I stu I'm stuttering, I'm stammering. It's because it is such a mixed bag. It really is. And, and uh, my ear to the ground at the present moment in time, some people are busy today, but some people are not so busy tomorrow. I think, we, I think the problem is with the industry, we are very much focused on finishing the projects that we've got on site and at this present moment in time and try and keep costs down, you know, and, and we're seeing costs just going through the roof. We really are, whether it be timber or plastic or steel, you know, we're talking 20, 25% increases. Now, how on earth are we going to get those? If we've done a fixed price bid, how are we going to get some of that money back? And our clients going to be a little bit strong in their, um, ways to to a contractor but they've got to realize the fact it's what it is the cost is what it is and and what we don't speak about is the digital world they are really we are so now involved with the digital world whether it be we're using google or whatever platforms or whatever uh, infrastructure we've got um, in, in that IT world, they are putting up prices and they're quite literally saying, well, it's 20% increase. There you go. You know, and, and we've seen that because obviously we, we're part of that. Um, um, we've seen those prices just come through and it's not a case of saying in 90 days, it's going to happen. It's going to say it's going to come in the 1st of June. And here we are the 31st of May being given that letter. 
wow, you know, and how do you accommodate for that? You can't go somewhere different. It's so difficult. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a strange world, strange world. There's another question come in here, and, and, and I have to say it's one that I was going to ask myself, so um, I'll throw it up on the, uh, the screen there. Uh, we've had another bunch of comments, particularly from um, Philip mm. Dunn, MP, uh. talking about um, putting a, a, a block on demolition um, to save the buildings, um, embodied carbon and, and uh. reuse and what have you. Because I of shake, my, my, I shake my head. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say. I mean, my, obviously, my focus tends to be on all things demolition, um, and you know, I don't want to see any demolition stopped because of concerns over embodied carbon. But there is a huge knock-on effect, isn't there? Um, because by and large, demolition clears the way for new build. Are we? Are we now looking at a, a possible future where new build takes second place to refurbishment? And if so, I mean, that cha that effectively changes the entire construction landscape, doesn't it? yeah it does but the but we're trying to keep hold of it if you look at it keep hold of old technology in some of the buildings which are so un uneconomical to heat to do so you've got to balance out in all of this the fact that you are going to be uh if you are knocking down a building the renew and changing it but the long-term effect is probably far outweighs the short-term effect of not knocking and, and refurbishing because you're going to, and the cost of refurbishing. I, I really feel that this is, uh, this is, this is an easy, easy comment to make rather than actually identifying the real problem. And that's the fact that some of the buildings we built in the sixties and seventies are just so inefficient. So, and, and don't meet, standards of today whether it be uh, dda or just generally and we need to say to ourselves to refurbish all of that's going to cost x and how much improvement are you going to get or to re actually demolish it and as, you, as you've said so many times a lot of these buildings are total all the materials that are not or come out of them are reused a hundred percent of the time OK, you've got asbestos in there, some of them, and et cetera. So you've got to get rid of some of the buildings because they're using asbestos, you know. Um, but you've also got to look at fire. You've also got to look at, you know, we can't have another Grenfell situation. Um, so you've got to incorporate all of that. And then there's also remediation. I, I think it. I think it's just the soundbite. Somebody's given off and somebody likes it somewhere and they put it into press. No, I totally agree. And funnily enough, I mean, you mentioned buildings of the 60s and the 70s. The one that stands out for me, uh, because I went to see it, was um, what was Fortress Wapping, the uh, the then new home built in the 80s, the the home of the Sun, the News of the World, and the Times. And at the time, that was considered to be high tech. You know, it, it accommodated all of the, the entire production of newspapers, so the editorial staff, the advertising staff, but the print and production as well. They were actually spitting paper out the door. At the time, it was a world leader. 35 well probably 32 years later it was no longer fit for purpose and mm. the whole thing had to be torn down you know they, they couldn't reuse it for anything at all mm. 30 years and and that to be honest i mean you know i, I hear that a lot particularly in the center of london mm. you know a, a, an average building's life expectancy now is 25 30 years and and it's that for a reason it's not because it's gone out of fashion although i, I guess there is a bit of that it's because it's no longer fit for purpose you know mm. we, you, you think about, I mean, uh, one of the challenges at, at, at Fortress Wapping was they built the floors to be huge, you know, huge concrete slabs, but they hadn't allowed for, you know, the ability to run um, things like fiber optics through it and all that kind of thing. Mm. And the easy answer was tear the damn thing down and start afresh, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I think when uh, yeah, hit the nail on the head, Mark, you, you know, it's, We've moved on um, and, and technology. And now also there is no doubt that the way we work after the pandemic is going to be different compared to what we did in 2019. Um, so offices are going to look different. They are going to be um, probably smaller um, and, and a little bit more virtual. Um, there are going to have to be, you know, if, if, if you're in the entertainment business and if you're in the, um, I don't know, other businesses that you, you people go there, they're not going to change. But if you're live, living and working um, in a, or if you live away from your office uh, quite a long way and you've got to travel, and if you've got all these fuel costs, 
travel costs, etc. But you want to attract good staff. And that must mean you've got to think of how you work in a different manner or you want to maintain good staff, it, it, not even attract good staff, maintain your existing workforce, which has been good to you over the last, I don't know how many years, as, but they live 50, 60 miles away. Then, wow, you know, why are you making them travel an hour and a half each day when you can have this virtual it, it's a different world, and we've got to look at it differently. That That is one of the many things. I mean, you've already touched on the fact that um, the demolition industry is, is a world leader in recycling, reuse, and, and repurposing. But that that's the other uh, the other argument, which I think is really valid, that the these MPs and academics don't seem to have um, grasped, is the fact that we are now living in a post-pandemic world. I mean, you're, you're sat in an office now that used to have, what, a dozen people in it? How yes. many in there today? Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't let's be honest you don't need to be there you could nope. you could do exactly this thing precise you know from from the safety and, and the comfort of your own home yep that's that part of the argument seems to have been lost you know rather than thinking about okay we've got these buildings perhaps we could refurb office buildings to help reduce the uh, the number of homeless people and and to help uh, you know create the number of the 250,000 homes that we need Instead of that, they've leapt on the environmental bandwagon and it's oh no more demolition because it's 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 destroying our embodied carbon. They're missing so many tricks on this. Yeah, I I, I think going back to it, it, it's an easy win to say what the what what's been said there, isn't it? It's a great one in this present moment in time. Um, because you can say, Oh, the, the environment, the environment, the environment. Because it is key to us all. It is it is absolutely our number one, should be our number one key priority. But understand everything around it and and as you say demolition is one of the best for recycling its materials even you know timber etc etc we can always be better uh, there's no there's no doubt about that we can always be better but it is extremely extremely good you know and uh, well I, I just think it, somebody's just done that as a vote winner there, there's my there's my opinion <laughs> yeah, it is, it is soundbite politics. Really it is, is soundbite politics, absolutely. Right, well, I'm going to let you get back to your not particularly busy office. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's busy in a virtual world. It's not busy. <laughs> well, I hope I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for the next uh, however many, uh, four or five hours, in the hope that we might get a, that little bit closer to the £5 billion pound mark. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, and, and that's what's really coming out of this. I don't know. It's... I think we've talked about the jitters a couple of months ago. We've still got the jitters. Um, they haven't been softened in any way. I think the future is it's still bright, but is it really bright? I don't know. And on that note, uh, yeah. So, Neil, have a great time over the weekend. Uh, I know you're you're off on your travels fairly soon as well, aren't you? I am, yeah. I'm off on my travels, fortunately, for 10 days. So, uh, like, like yourself, I... You're going up to Hillhead. I'm going somewhere different. <laughs> going to visit friends. Better. Let's be going some, honest. Visit some, visit some friends. <laughs> Good luck. Right. Okay. Well, in that case, I, I will give Hillhead your regards uh, in yes. your absence. Thank um, you. Uh, have a great time. Have a great uh, Platinum Jubilee weekend, whatever it is that you're doing. I'm, I'm sure you are the type that hosts garden parties and things. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, i'm planning to batten down the hatches and have nothing whatsoever to do with it but yeah. have a great weekend uh, i shall speak to you hopefully this time next month when we should hopefully the jitters will have subsided and hopefully things will be just a little less mixed yes Let, let's have a little bit of clarity yeah absolutely neil have a great day thanks for joining us uh, thank you very much indeed